Welcome back to the second episode. In this episode, we will get practical and start on our animation. But first, let me give you a quick overview on how I normally approach such a project. We now already have the mood board and a general idea of what we want to do. So from that point, here is what I normally do to be as efficient as possible. The first step is to block out everything. This is to get a rough idea of the scale, of the camera framing and of the whole 3D scene in general. As already mentioned in the last episode, it also helps to develop the initial idea further. Then the second step is to do the rough animation, especially for the camera to figure out the shot. This is important to do this early because then we know for the rest of the project what will be seen by the camera and what not, which will again spare us much time and much work because we don't have to focus on unnecessary parts of the scene because they don't get seen by the camera anyway. Then the third step is to replace all our cubes we created in the blockout stage with our actual assets. This is a super fun part and feels like playing with Lego, but at this stage, make sure to not lose time in the details. The next step is texturing and lighting. At this stage, we go to the rendering mode for the first time and most assets probably come with textures, but we might have to adjust them or add some texture to stuff that is not textured yet. And we also add an HDRI and if necessary, some initial lights and or maybe a fog. And the goal of this step is to set the general mood and look for the scene. Next, let's finally add all the important details. This can be some cars or humans in the distance or some mist between the buildings and much more. At this step, you can lose a lot of time. So you have to balance it so that you have as many details as possible with not losing too much time. Then we're going to refine the animation. Then for the next step, we just fine tune or add little animations to give it some extra details. For example, we can add a slight camera shake or animate some birds in the distance or whatever we have in our scene. This step is just to bring the whole world to life. Then the next step is rendering. When we are pleased with our scene, we can render it out. Depending on the animation, we can add some adjustments in the compositing nodes or render on different layers. Then the last step is to do some post-processing. With everything rendered out, we can import it into our post-processing program, something like After Effects or something other, and give it the finishing touch, like some color grading, some grain, some lens flur, maybe lens distortion, and you know it all, like the compositing stuff. These eight steps are not written in stone and they might vary from person to person or from project to project, but it's just something I generally follow because it helps me to be as efficient as possible and not to waste any time on unnecessary details. So let's get to the first step, the blocking out of the scene. Make sure to download my startup file so you have all the same settings as me. If you want, you can also set it up as your own startup file. If you open it up and then go under file, and then here under defaults, you can select save as startup file. Once you have everything set up, let's start. So the idea is to have some kind of glass building at the top, a character that jumps down and a city below. What I like to use is this cube tool over here. With that, you can really quickly and easily add cubes. So let's add one to the top of the building and a few for the city. Okay, now let's add in the camera. To move the camera, I like to use the fly mode. If you have my startup file, you can access it once you're in the camera by pressing Ctrl F. Now we can fly around with WASD like in a game. Let's place the camera below the building. Now let's add in some more cubes to get a better understanding of the framing. I like to add larger buildings to the side to create a natural vignette effect for our character and create a more interesting composition. You can also copy and scale the cubes around to add some additional buildings. Now let's go to the camera and let's scroll down to the camera settings. And in there, let's open the viewport display. Here, I like to put the pause part two to one so we don't get distracted by anything outside of the frame. Let's add all of our cubes in the background into a collection by selecting them all and pressing M on the keyboard. And let's call it city. And let's also add the one cube in the foreground to a collection and let's call it foreground. Now I just duplicate some of the cubes and move them to the back to make the city even larger. 
let's also add in a cylinder for our character that is roughly its size. For example, uh, 1.8 meter height with a radius of 0 0.3 meters. And now we can see that our cubes are way too small for actual buildings. So let's scale them up until it works with our real life scale character. Let's move everything in place again and we are good to go. Let's get our attention back to the camera because there are two more important things we want to fix right now from the beginning. The first one is the aspect ratio and the focal length and the second one is the rough animation. First, let's choose our aspect ratio, which will be 16 to 9 for me, but you can also use a more cinematic aspect ratio like 21 to 9, or the shot we are going to create will also work perfectly for Reels and TikTok, so you can also choose 9 to 16. Then Google the pixel size you need for that format, and you can also scale it up with this procentual slider. So for example, I can put in 1920 to, to 1080 and then if I want 4k I can just put in 200%. But now for the focal length I think for this one a bit more wide angle could look good so let's set it to something like 28 millimeter and then let's create a good looking composition again. Here it helps to activate the composition guides in the camera settings. Let's activate the golden ratio because I think that might work well and let's line everything up. Let's also fill out the newly created blank spaces between the buildings with some more duplicated cubes and move them around. Next, let's think of a camera animation. I like to keep it slow and grounded to give it the cinematic feel. The movie Dune, for example, captures really well. So one option would be just a slow backwards move. Let's go to the animation tab here on top and let's try them out with some simple keyframes. In the graphs editor, let's press the keyboard key T and select linear for now. So the animation is all the same speed and we don't have to deal with the curves until later. Let's change the speed to around five seconds and add a new keyframe on frame one. Now we have a subtle animation. By the way, I used 24 frames per second to also give it an extra cinematic feel because that's what most cinema cameras use and five seconds is just five times 24 frames, which is around 120 frames. I also want to add another shot before this one. I imagine a close-up of the character jumping away from the glass where it all goes into slow motion. So let's rename and copy our initial camera and set up the shot. For that, the camera we created first, let's call it shot two, and the camera we just duplicated, let's call it shot one. On the shot two, let's increase our timeline or like total frames by another three seconds and let's move the keyframes of the second shot to the back so we have the first three seconds to work with our first camera. Now by pressing on this green icon we can view it through our new camera and change the active camera in the scene. Let's also give the character a simple animation to estimate the whole shot a little bit better. I want the character go out of the first frame really fast and then when it comes into the second shot I want it to come in fast but then slow down into slow motion. Next let's delete all our keyframes on the duplicated camera on shot 1 and let's move it in place a lot more closer. I think it will look cool if we rotate it a little bit and I also want this to be a little more close up so let's change the focal length to 85 millimeters. Let's try it out with adding a keyframe on the first frame and then move out, rotate it a bit and add another one on frame 72. So we have around three seconds. Okay, this looks interesting. It's still kind of hard to imagine, but once we have some glass destruction there, which will turn into slow motion, it will look good. What we can do to give it even more of a slow motion feel is to speed up the animation at the beginning. Remember, this still looks trashy because we are still at a very rough blockout stage. It's just to experiment and see how it looks. I also think these two shots could work great together because we have a continuation of motion and movement in the two shots. Both moves go outwards and we also play with the slow motion. Let's rewatch it and switch the camera at the right moment so we can see it side by side. Okay, I think this works for now for the blockout stage. We will make it look smooth and clean in episode 4 when we refine 
and add all the animations. But for now, that's it with the first episode and with the blockout stage. I hope you could learn something along the way and the next episode is gonna get real interesting because we're gonna replace all these cubes with actual buildings and build our world. See you there.